Canadians cannot afford another painful, costly, chaotic, and corrupt year of Justin Trudeau. He will not quit. He must be fired. His ego, arrogance, and incompetence will always have him putting himself ahead of Canadians. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, happy end of summer. But really, what's there to be happy about after Justin Trudeau's recent cabinet retreat? What changed? Remember at the beginning of the summer after the people of St. Paul's voted against Justin Trudeau's proposed 61 cent a litre carbon tax, voted against him doubling housing costs and driving two million people to the food bank, voted against the crime and chaos he has caused. All the PMO staffers called you in the media and said there would be heads rolling, that they would fire ministers. They called the Globe and Mail and said incompetent and discredited Christia Freeland would lose her job to Mark Carney, or at least to someone who knew how to work a calculator. And then that there would be other changes. Maybe even the Prime Minister would step aside to make way and to try and bury the disastrous NDP Liberal record and put a fresh coat of paint on the broken down Liberal car. Well, what did we learn at this expensive Liberal retreat in Halifax? We learned that nothing will change. That Christia Freeland, who's been Canada's worst ever finance minister, helping to double our national debt and drive inflation to its worst in four decades, will stay in her job. Sean Fraser, who destroyed what was the best immigration system in the world, will stay in his job. The crazy carbon tax minister, Stefan Gilbo, who wants to ban trucks, roads, and plastic straws while liberals legalize crack and heroin, he's going to keep his job as well. The disastrous justice minister, who's helped give, give Canada a 50% increase in violent crime and a 120% increase in gun crime, he will keep his job. But most important of all, Justin Trudeau, the man who is not worth the cost, announced that he will too will keep his job. Canadians cannot afford another painful, costly, chaotic, and corrupt year of Justin Trudeau. He will not quit. He must be fired. His ego, arrogance, and incompetence will always have him putting himself ahead of Canadians. He would rather allow Cana he would ra Justin Trudeau would rather force an entire generation to go without homes. Two million people to go to food banks. 25% of kids to go to school hungry. That he would rather that continue to be the case than to give up power. He will not quit. He must be fired. And the person to do it is Jagmeet Singh. Singh sold out workers to sign on to this costly coalition. He has voted to hike the carbon tax to 61 cents a liter for, for policies to double housing costs and to tax food. Now, why did he do it? He told us that if he became part of the government, he'd bring down food prices. That was one of his promises. Did he succeed? Well, you don't actually have to ask me if he succeeded, ask him. This is what he said about food prices last week. When you go into the grocery store and you're buying your groceries, you're spending more than ever before and you're leaving with less than ever before. Again, that is after two years of Jagmeet Singh joining the Liberal government. So what's clear is that Singh did not join to bring down grocery prices or housing costs, both of which have skyrocketed since he joined this coalition. He joined with, to keep Trudeau in power so that he could get his pension. Jagmeet Singh is trying to delay the election until 
after February of next year so that he can qualify for a $2.2 million taxpayer-funded pension. That's why Canadians are calling him Sell Out Singh. My message to Sell Out Singh is this. Put the people ahead of your pension. Break the costly coalition with Trudeau to trigger a carbon tax election where Canadians can choose between the costly coalition of the NDP Liberals that tax your food, punish your work, take your money, double your housing cost, and unleash crime and chaos in your community, or common sense Conservatives who will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. Axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, stop the crime, to bring it home for our country. We'll bring home lower prices by getting rid of the carbon tax, which will not only lower the cost for farmers and truckers to bring us food or for Canadians to heat their homes or gas their cars, but will unleash $25 billion more of GDP every single year, according to finance department publications from this Liberal government. We'll enact a bring it home tax cut to make our taxes simpler, lower and fairer the goal is to bring home more powerful paychecks and production to this country. We'll get rid of the government gatekeepers to allow us to produce our clean Canadian natural gas, our vital minerals, our oil, our forestry products, and to bring home production to this country. We'll get rid of the gatekeepers by allowing our immigrant, our brilliant immigrants, to take a Blue Seal exam and get working in their professions so we have more doctors and nurses. We will get rid of the government gatekeepers to build the homes. We will require local municipalities uh, speed up permits, free up land and cut development taxes as a condition of getting federal funds to build 15% more homes per year. We'll sell off 6,000 federal buildings and thousands of acres of federal land to build, 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 build. We'll cut taxes on home building. We'll back the trades because we need the boots and not suits in order to build those homes. We will build those homes in safe neighbourhoods, with jail and not bail for repeat violent offenders, with treatment not decriminalised and subsidised hard drugs, and by securing our borders to keep criminals, terrorists, drugs and guns out while we bring, and at the same time, we will ensure that our stolen cars do not leave our, our ports as they do right now. We will get that money by cancelling the ridiculous gun grab and respecting the rights of our law-abiding, licensed, trained and tested hunters and sports shooters. We will also secure our borders to make sure that never again do accused ISIS terrorists get into our country and become citizens of Canada even after the existence of a video apparently showing that same terrorist mutilating a human body on a crucifix during the ISIS war uh, of uh, over a decade ago. These are the kinds of disastrous mistakes, radical approaches of the Liberal government that must end so that we can replace their costly incompetence with our common sense. And the result will be a country where hard work again earns a powerful paycheck and pension that buys affordable food, gas and homes in safe neighbourhoods under a proud Canadian flag in the country we know and love, Canada. Let's bring it home. Well, I wouldn't have had to do that in this case. The reason that we have these strikes is because of inflation. We had last year the largest number of days lost to strike since 1986. What do we have in 1986? Inflation. Inflation leads to strikes because workers and unions have to fight to get back what they lost in purchasing power. Well, how did the inflation happen? The government doubled the debt. Justin Trudeau printed $700 billion of cash. 
We incre he increased the money supply by 40 percent, while the real economy grew by 4 percent. When you add money 10 times faster than you add the stuff that money buys, then you get inflation. And that screws over workers, because they live off wages. If you're a billionaire, like the people Trudeau vacations with, then you don't have to worry about inflation because your assets are inflation proof or even inflation positive. You get richer. It's a transfer of wealth from the have nots to the have yachts. And you know what? It, it's ironic. It's all done with Jagmeet Singh's support. He can huff and puff all he wants, but he supported the inflationary policies that destroyed the wages of working class people. And he, support, he supports what Justin Trudeau did on the rail strike. Do you know how we know? Do you know how we know that? Do you know how we know that? No. Do you know how we know that, J that Jagmeet supports it? Because he's still in a coalition with him. And if Jagmeet didn't support it, he would respond to my letter this afternoon and say he's pulling out of the costly coalition and he's going to vote to bring down Trudeau and cause a carbon tax election. And that's what I'm calling for him to do today. Jagmeet Singh, stop selling out the workers. Stop being sellout Singh. Put the people ahead of your pension. Vote for a carbon tax election now. Contraceptive gratuite et l'insuline presque gratuite. Pilule, insuline. Est-ce que vous allez garder ces programmes en place? We will be keeping the medical programs for insulin and contraceptive. As far as I know, these programs are not really operative. There are a lot of promises in the air. Excuse me, might I uh, provide the answer before you interrupt? Yes. You'll see our election platform that I'll be uh, uh, tabling as soon as elections are called. But for now, all we have from them are promises. Promises. Uh, promises from the Liberals, uh, the Bloc, and the New Democrats. That if they spend more money today, There'll be gifts for everybody. They already promised. No, no, no. Please do not interrupt. I will finish off my answer if you don't mind. Thank you. There is no program operating right now. How many people have received any of this insulin? Are you going to keep the programs? Yes or no? You keep the programs? Yes or no? How many people are already benefiting from it? How many? How many? How many? You don't want to answer? You don't want to answer either. You keep interrupting me. Hard to answer. You have said that you're answering a false question. And the reason for which you have admitted that it's a false question is because when I ask you how many people have already been covered by the program, you can't answer because the answer is probably none. I finish off here. You can't uh, keep something that doesn't yet exist. There's my answer. Thank you. Quebecers and Canadians are concerned. First of all, we have to acknowledge that Justin Trudeau has destroyed our immigration system. We had a multi-generational consensus in immigration for literally decades before Trudeau came along. Immigration was not even a controversial issue prior to Trudeau. We brought in hardworking, law-abiding citizens in numbers that our housing market, our job market, and our health care system could absorb. What has since happened? Trudeau and, and Fraser destroyed the temporary foreign worker program by telling their bureaucrats to overlook fraud, by getting rid of the rule that required that you couldn't bring in temporary foreign workers for low-wage jobs in places where there was over 6 percent unemployment, in other words, where there were lots of people looking for work. They destroyed the international student program by allowing rampant fraud and abuse and increasing the numbers to levels we could not afford. And they grew the population almost three times as fast as the housing stock. That is entirely a decision of Justin Trudeau and the NDP Liberals. When I'm Prime Minister, 
The temporary foreign worker program will be used exclusively to fill jobs that Canadians cannot or do not fill, like in agriculture sectors, but never to replace Canadians or drive down wages. We will only admit international students to, if they have a way to pay their bills, a house to live in, and a real admission letter to a real educational institution. And population growth will be below the growth in jobs, housing, and health care. That is a common sense plan. Now let's bring it home. So, uh, so la question des Paribou, monsieur. The interpreter apologizes, but the question was inaudible. We don't have to destroy the forest sector in order to respect the laws that protect various animal species. We don't need to eliminate hundreds of square kilometers of forest sectors to protect some 5,000 caribou. I'd like to remind you that our forestry sector brings in less than 1% of the trees in our forests every year. This leaves the other 99% of the trees for nature. And I'd add that the forestry sector plants two trees for every tree that it cuts down. Well, certainly, we want to protect animal species and jobs, both. But I'd add that natural resources are the responsibility of provinces, and the Quebec government, with its scientists, uh, ecology experts, have uh, set a policy that will protect uh, both the animal species and the forestry jobs. We want, we have to have fewer, we have to have a smaller population growth. There's no question about it. We cannot grow the population at three times the rate of the housing stock as Trudeau has been doing. Uh, we need to have a growth rate that is below the growth in housing, health care, and employment. Uh, if you want uh, to look at, if you want an idea of how I would run the immigration system overall, it's the way it was run for the 30 years prior to Trudeau being Prime Minister. We had a common sense consensus between li Liberals and Conservatives for three decades that screened people to make sure they were safe, only brought in the numbers that we could absorb into our housing, health care and job market, and blocked temporary foreign workers where they were taking jobs from Canadians. That was a common sense consensus that existed before Justin Trudeau and the radical and out of control NDP Liberal government destroyed our system. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup tout le monde.